sweaty oh, I, from a run. <laughs> yeah, I, I never look like any, yeah, I, I always look terrible. <laughs> You're like, it's rehearsal. Look, you look fitter than all of us there. I'll say that. <laughs> Well, uh, well, welcome again, everybody. That uh, thank you guys for for testing this out. We had talked about uh, doing this a, a few weeks ago. We're just trying to do like one more step closer to being able to like see each other and interact with each other at, at midweek, with the hope that you know down the road uh, we'll meet in person. And we don't know what that looks like yet, but uh, we thought that this would be uh, kind of a cool step towards that. So um, we're we're gonna keep it really concise tonight. Uh, because we do want to keep it to that 30 minute window and, and look what we talk about tonight there's no way we can cover everything but we really just want to uh, give everyone something to, to chew on and discuss and uh, and and hopefully it, it's it's uh, really edifying but hey let's let's pray and then uh, Lydia is going to share a little story and a, and a picture for all of you uh, so welcome everyone that's on uh, on Facebook as well um, and I don't know if anybody else is going to pop in on zoom yet but let's let's pray together um our Heavenly Father, we thank you so very much for your goodness and for your love and mercy, God. You really are our rescuer and our healer. God, you are the source of truth, and we desire uh, to know truth, God. We want to honor you um, by knowing you and knowing each other. Um, God, we, we just ask that you would guide us in our, our discussion and, and help us to, to, to get at, at truth and love and and, and all the good things that, that you offer. Um, we, we just pray for our, our church. We pray for our community and our world uh, that desperately needs you. Uh, and we need you tonight, God. So please uh, be present with us. We ask this in, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. So uh, I'm going to pop up a picture here. And Lid, you can, uh, yeah. you know, kind of, uh, uh, which one? I guess oh, I, I'm going to try to do both if I can. can. Put both of them up. Yeah, let yeah. me see if I can just do it through. Oh, yeah, there oh, it is. Great. Can oh, you guys see both pictures yeah. there? Two, right? I see, I see one. Oh, okay. oh, you do? Okay, hang on a sec. Uh, well, you can... Uh, I mean, you can do one at a time. Them, yeah, I'll, I'll go back and forth because um, I can't get them yeah. both on. Sorry. So, um, um, it just so there. happens, you know, I these are my, my two grandpas in these two pictures. Hector's going to be switching back and forth between them. Um, but it just so happens that these are the two pictures I have of um, them up in my living room. And in both of the pictures, my grandpas are dancing, which I never realized before this week that <laughs> uh, both my grandpas were dancing in these two pictures that I had up, which is kind of crazy. But um, the funny thing about these pictures is that both of my grandpas grew up not dancing. Um, for my grandpa Hansen, uh, who's in the picture with my grandma, um, he actually grew up dancing and he was a wonderful dancer. Uh, and as my mom tells it, he would go dancing every weekend. And uh, he would uh, participate in these house dances where um, the participants would make their own music. They put cornmeal on the floor so that their shoes would slide easier. Um, and they would uh, just dance the night away every weekend. And, and um, one of the things we talked about this past weekend at my grandpa's memorial was just uh, what a great dancer he was. But when he became a Christian, he was told that dancing was something that he needed to abstain from. Uh, because it led to other sinful behaviors like drinking or, or like premarital sex or what have you, and just wasn't something that uh, Christians did. Uh, and my grandpa Widbin also uh, followed those same um, guidelines. Um, my grandpa Hansen, fortunately, uh, after I think it was when my mom was about 16 years old, uh, my mom and her sister just happened to be at a function with uh, my grandpa and they started doing these old traditional Norwegian dances and they started doing some uh, polka dancing and waltzing. And my, my sister uh, or my mom's sister and my mom were able to convince my, my grandfather to dance with them. Uh, and that was the first time in at least 16 years he had danced. But uh, from then, even though it took a lot of uh, many conversations about um, whether it was okay or not. My grandpa was was able to take up his 
his old hobby again and really enjoy it. Uh, my grandpa Widbin, this picture that you see here, um, that was the first time he ever danced in his life and probably the only time was at my wedding. And um, it was really, you know, I don't, I don't even remember the moment all that well, but I just remember, you know, we were all dancing and I just had this, you know, split second desire to dance with my grandpa. And so I just grabbed him <laughs> up on the dance floor without really any thought to, to whether this was something he was comfortable with. <laughs> and I could tell right away that this wasn't something he was used to. Um, but I'll never forget the smile that crossed his face and you can kind of see it in this picture, but um, it was kind of a, a special thing for me too, because when my grandfather <laughs> passed away, um, my aunts and uncles found this, this photo in his bedside table and my grandpa wasn't one to really keep many pictures. So, um, you know, I never got to really talk to my grandpa about why he kept this picture so close to him. But um, for me, I just, I, I like to imagine that it was because he was just so proud to have done this new thing and to be able to connect with his granddaughter through this and to be able to find joy in it. So, um, but anyway, Hector uh, had had this idea this past week um, after celebrating my, my grandpa Hanson's life uh, that, you know, we should take some time to kind of think about uh, these rules in our lives that we have for ourselves, or maybe there's there are rules that have been established by our churches, or, or um, you know, maybe there are rules we followed in the past, or rules we follow in the present. Um, but to kind of think about those rules that we have uh, for ourselves, and think about um, you know how we engage with other people who might not have those rules. Um, whether, you know, how much thought we should give to what rules we follow and what we don't. And so we just kind of wanted to open up a very uh, informal discussion about this. Um, and we're going to start off with, with this question about uh, what rules you guys uh, in this conversation have, um, you know, maybe either, I guess, if you've, if there's ever been a rule in your church, uh, which we all go to the same church here, but <laughs> Awkward. you know, we went to a church in the past, a different church. I've gone to several churches in my life, yeah. but um, you know, what what rules uh, your church has that um, maybe you felt like you've been judged for um, because it wasn't something that you personally followed, and um, other people in the church did, and so you felt judged for that. Um, so as we take time for you to think about that, um, I'm going to read a passage. No, I mean, yeah, 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 go ahead, okay, read the passage. All right. So, uh, look, the, the, the passage comes from uh, Romans, right? Uh, what was it? Romans chapter 14, verses 13 through 23. So if you mm -hmm. have your Bibles, or you have a computer, and a, yeah. Uh, one more time, Lydia. Roman open an app or whatever. Yeah. Actually, isn't isn't that one of the kind of rules now that people have too? By the way, is the the whole uh, debate about having a digital Bible or like a oh, yeah. lot, you know a real yeah. flesh, you know yeah. not flesh. Yeah. Ew, if you have a Bible of flesh, please <laughs> please get rid of that. Um, although I guess like <laughs> leather bound. The leather bound. Yeah, I guess I guess. My Bible is leather and quite flesh colored. I don't know. Ah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, well, let's read this passage together. Romans 14, starting at verse 13. Let us therefore no longer pass judgment on one another, but resolve instead never to put a stumbling block or hindrance in the way of another. I know and am persuaded in the Lord Jesus that nothing is unclean in itself, but it is unclean for anyone who thinks it unclean. If your brother or sister is being injured by what you eat, you are no longer walking in blood. Do not let the ruin of one for whom Christ died. So do not let the good be spoken of as evil. For the kingdom of God is not food and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. 
The one who thus serves Christ is acceptable to God and has human approval. Let us then pursue what makes for peace and for mutual upbuilding. Do not for the sake of food destroy the work of God. Everything is indeed clean, but it is wrong for you to make others fall by what you eat. It is good not to eat meat or drink wine or do anything that makes your brother or sister stumble. The faith that you have, have as your own conviction before God. Blessed are those who have no reason to condemn themselves because of what they approve. But those who have doubts are condemned if they eat, because they do not act from faith, for whatever does not proceed from faith is sin. Hmm. Hmm a lot in there <laughs> yeah there definitely is, is, a, is a lot in there and maybe as like a kind of a good uh you know starting spot again is uh is to maybe you know share share with the the crew um just like w maybe a rule again that some something just maybe kind of threw you for a loop as to like well why is that that wrong like for me like the the thing about the reason that the the story about uh, Lydia's uh, family uh, not being able to dance, which I, you know, some of the churches I grew up in, um, that was sort of kind of an understood thing. Um, but I also had some some churches where you could dance, and you know, culturally being Hispanic, it was like you know, like that that it was just strange to me to hear that like churches you know, we're outlawing dance, especially when like we read in the Bible, like how do you get to the part about David <laughs> dancing before the Lord? And, 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 you know, like, uh, how do you, how do you justify? And, and there, there's a lot of, of rules like that out there. Um, so I was just curious as to what, what your experiences were with that. Well, you know? I'll, I'll, say, I'll say this, we all do go to the same church, but the church of St. Paul, the rules have changed. And some of those rules have either disappeared or new rules appear as time goes on because the rules that I grew up with in St. Paul's like 1980s to like 90s were uh -huh. very different than like wearing sneakers was a big faux pas. That was like a really you wear sneakers on Sunday. Um, you had dress shoes, girls had dress shoes, boys had dress shoes or loafers, men had loafers or whatever, but no one and then like few people wore like cowboy boots and that was okay but sneakers were seen as like a thing even even when mike started coming to church with me in 2000 just starting to laugh because i was like do you have any dress shoes and he's like no and i went <laughs> and bought him dress shoes for the first time he came to st paul's so okay cool mm. nice uh anybody else in in the the group and the easiest thing is just to raise your hand so you can see it. That's kind of, Christina, we see your hand. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's funny because I didn't have one before and then I was thinking about it. And it's funny that the verse you chose is so much about like food and eat because the one thing I could think of, like when I first became a Christian that surprised me and almost felt me, made me feel like I was like, didn't belong was there was a Christian camp that my best friend, um, belong to and it was like a evangelical center um discipleship center and like the emphasis on fitness and like being heavier like as like a sin of gluttony or sloth was pretty offensive and like I did musical theater my whole life I've always been active walking around like I don't sit on my couch for days on end eating bonbons like I do things and like like people, we do <laughs> yeah, like I yeah. Good for you, but you know what? You run, so good for you. Yeah. Um, but like some of the requirements, like I wanted to participate in their um, discipleship program that would basically disciple you to disciple others and to train you to start to lead a small group, but you needed to be able to run a mile in a certain minute, certain number of minutes. Wow. And I like worked on it all summer and like, I'm just not a runner and like obesity runs in my family. So it's like going to take me extra it's going to be like extra obstacles for me to have the lean body to run in that way. And it made me feel like, like, does the Lord require me to be fit, to be useful, you know? And that's something I had to play with. And, you know, I've been very blessed with, you know, um, St. Paul's has never made me feel that way, but that was my first experience. Like when I was a, a new Christian, I went to the camp and I'm like, and then I, I went to this, I went to a wedding and like was sat at a table with all these like young 
Christians and everybody was super tall and super skinny. And it was like hard not seeing my body type echoed back among Christians. So when I come to St. Paul's, like we have so much diversity in like age and like lifestyle and body shape and stuff mm. that it was really helpful to see, like, we're all accepted here. And it was like, reaffirming. Hmm. Oh, very cool. cool. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's why I remain fat. So you will feel comfortable and welcome. In our congregation. Wow. <laughs> in the Lord's work, if I'm, Pastor if, if I'm fatter than everybody else, then everybody will feel comfortable. So He's no, seriously. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. You, you're <laughs> go ahead, continue. Part of my issue is silly humor. No. Um. Anyhow, I'll I'll chip in here. I guess. Hi, everybody. Hey. Uh, glad to see you. I grew up unlike uh, like Lydia and Hector. I grew up in a very liberal environment in church where um just about anything goes between Haddon Heights Church and Ocean City Church and Coffee Houses. Plus, I grew up in the 60s, which was um, pushing against all the established rules. So I know that there were laws, legalisms in, in the minds of some of the older generation, but uh, they didn't carry down to me or, well, in my family, my mom had, had rules like uh, certain things that you didn't do on Sunday. You didn't go to movies on Sunday. You weren't supposed to play cards on Sunday. But we didn't really go to movies or play, play that many cards. I was always outside playing. So n none of these rules really uh, impacted me exactly. And uh, then when I became a Christian, uh, my high school years, I became more acquainted with people with rules and so forth. But um, actually, I, I did have experience, like, for example, um, the senior pastor I worked under in Collingswood Church for a couple of years had this thing about not wearing blue jeans. I sh showed up in jeans on my day off in the office and he sent me home to get dressed <laughs> and, um, and uh, he uh, he had a real thing about playing or doing certain things on Sunday, the Sabbath. One time I came in and I was all exhilarated because I had gone to the pool with my family, the community pool where I got to see all kinds of church members and make all kinds of contacts. So I was telling him and he said, oh, I don't think you should be swimming on Sunday. And I went, what? <laughs> so, yeah, when, when Jesus walked on the water, it, it was not a Sunday. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it's, yeah. it obviously wasn't. <laughs> yeah. But that's um, coming out of the Asbury tradition, the, the, the holiness tradition of Methodism that he was a part of and Bev, for a little bit of time went to Asbury well, for three years. And so she inherited some of that. I don't dance and I don't chew and I don't, she was a girl. So anyhow, um, there was that influence that I knew of in the church and I dared not mow our lawn Sunday afternoon in between morning and evening services because for the pastor to be caught there, sure. that would be a problem. But I knew that. and. I didn't feel like mowing the lawn on Sunday afternoon, anyhow. <laughs> yeah, one that you want to share? Uh, well, what I was sharing with, with you, a couple of our yeah. participants um, before we started this meeting was um, when I was in high school, one of the big books out was uh, I Kiss Dating Goodbye. And yeah. that was kind of uh, not something that I ever felt pressured about, but I, it was a big thing in the culture uh and even when I went to college there were a few people I knew like in my dorm that were really like sticking to that basically the idea was that you don't date for dating sake you date very seriously you court somebody mm -hmm. with the intention of marrying them and if you know you don't have the that intention uh then you don't date them at all um 
And I think I, I sort I remember in high school, I was always like a very boy crazy girl. Um, like I was always the girl on retreats that would be like looking for like a boyfriend or, or like going after guys. Um, and, and there were some girls in my youth group that kind of would give me the side eye about it. And maybe it came from that cultural perspective. I don't know, but um, that was something that I definitely felt judged about growing up, I would say. So Lydia had a really good question that she wrote down and I thought uh, it went really well with the passage that she read because look, I, and again, there's so much in that passage and we're encouraging people to check it out th throughout the week and just really, you know, really start chewing on this a little bit because the question she asked is, um, what is it, what is this, it's twofold. So what does this passage say about personal freedom and what is freedom's relationship to love, right? Because um, th there's something that for me growing up, I, I had to kind of realize, and, and maybe it took a little bit of, of maturing as well, um, because I, I had to kind of understand when I heard a rule that maybe seemed a little silly, or I didn't find much scriptural basis for, um, it was easy to just like lash out and be like, well, this person's just an idiot and they're just, they're just being legalistic or whatever. But I started to see that there are reasons and, and context behind why these traditions or why these, I guess, quote unquote rules crop up. I know for even when, when Lydia mentioned, uh, you know, I, the, the courting thing that was, that was really big. I remember for, for me in, in that time, um, you know, teen premarital sex was, was a kind of a big thing, right? And, 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 a, and a big deal. And, uh, and, and so this was, and, and we, we are seeing the divorce rate skyrocket in not, not just in general society, but in, inside the church. And so this was, you know, that those rules were kind of brought up as, a, well, we got to do something, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so even, even though I can kind of look back on it and be like, man, you, you, <laughs> you, you, you uh, that was a, a little strange of a rule, maybe, um, you know, th there, was, there was kind of a, a heart or an intent behind it. And I guess uh, I'm just kind of curious as to, to how, what you guys feel or think about that and how you would answer that. Um, what does this passage say about personal freedom and what is freedom's relationship to love? I think you had some thoughts on that, on that too. Yeah. Well, if anyone else has any thoughts. Can you, can you repeat the question just one more time? Yeah. So um, what does this passage say about personal freedom? And then what is freedom's relationship to love? Like, how, how is there that connection? And, and I guess maybe what I mean by that is like, um, even me having, you know, like the, the one rule that I hated as a kid was no hats in church. Uh, because for me, it was like, that was just the way I expressed myself stylistically. I didn't think I was being offensive or anything like that. And I remember specifically, there was a, a lady in the one church I grew up in uh, that yelled at me. You know, I was, I was a teen sitting in the service, listening to the pastor preach on my own volition. And, and here she is, you know, being offended because I'm wearing a hat. But I, I think I think the connection of love, you know, made me made me realize that okay, wait a minute, this wearing a hat is not a big deal for me, but it is for her, and it's keeping her from really connecting with God. Even though there's no scriptural basis whatsoever to mm. that, um, I'm I'm gonna you know out of love, I'm going to you know sacrifice and and and, and do this thing, you know. Well, well, we got to... Yeah, and abstain from, yeah. from wearing the hat, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Mel. So with that said, I just think that with the scripture, the thing that popped out for me was about, you know, it's, it talks about that when they're talking about the food and drink and how itself isn't evil. It's not evil in itself, but it's your intention behind it, what, what the intention is and what it is. And, you know, are you doing it for the purification of the Lord and the edification of, of God if you're not? Then you're then it can be a, into a sinful nature, but it's not necessarily. And it's and they're saying don't call someone out on this, you know. Basic. I think that's basically what they're saying. Um, you know, it's a, a, you know whatever you believe. You're saying like the the heart, like the the intention or the heart behind behind it. Right. Yeah. Right. It's it's a really good scripture for that. So that you know, because sometimes you get a rule about something. Mm -hmm. And the rule is to keep people safe or maybe they just uh, keep things uh, level, but it's 
then it's taken as law from scripture when that's not maybe not really what's what's going on yeah yeah i think i feel like the verse you were really touching on was one that really stuck out to me which was for the kingdom of god is not food or drink but righteousness and peace and joy in the holy spirit so it's not about the rule in itself but like you're saying it has a lot to do with your intent behind that and is this for the good of your brother and sister or and you know for the good of of you know the glory of god yeah. or is it just something that you just want to do for the sake of freedom in itself correct um, yeah and, and i'll yeah. say i'll say this too that with me in, in that specific situation of, of just saying okay i'm just gonna suck it up and and uh you know remove remove the hat there was actually a joy in that uh, or a freedom in that that there wasn't this dividing wall between me and, and this lady anymore. You know, she recognized that, like, I, I listened to her. And in that, there, were, there was a freedom to that. Was it, like, a, a necessary thing for me to do? No, I mean, I could have argued with her and been like, well, where does that, you know? But, uh, you know, in God, in his, his grace and mercy to, to change my heart in that moment where I wanted to just scream at her or just, you know, tell her off, um, allowed me not to, and, and it allowed me to express love. And in that there was, there was a freedom, you know, and it was, it's strange because I had, I had to kind of sacrifice or swallow my pride in a sense. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I don't know, I just thought that was, that, that can be a beautiful thing when that happens. Yeah. But it is tricky though, because like, I do think too, that there are moments where calling people out about the maybe false ways of thinking can also be a demonstration of love. Um, but maybe that's only available if you've already invested that relationship, right? And, and there's already that, that sort of love and understanding to, to kind of allow that to happen. Mm -hmm. I, I agree. Know. Yeah, I think that the goal should always be to reach a point of understanding or to propose an alternate way of thinking rather than to criticize where they're at currently mm -hmm. so i think like asking questions is important to figure out where their head is at and maybe you'll learn something new too um and i think that's how we we should respond whether we're the one that thinks what they're doing is wrong or whether we're the one that somebody says what we're doing is wrong like you know, asking, oh, okay, what, um, for you, you know, what about it is respectful? Okay, I'll consider that, you know, uh, I think that's what's important. What's the goal? Is the goal to put someone in their place and make them feel bad and shameful? Or is the goal to strengthen the relationship, have some accountability, encourage in the right direction? Hmm. Yeah, cool. I think um, one of the things that stuck out to me about this passage was this concept of faith being a strength of conviction that when we're strong in our faith we have a strong conviction about something and that only comes when we actually take the time to think through what we believe and to think through does this not only make sense like for me in my context in my world but for other people and where they're coming from and looking at different perspectives and looking at different people's stories. And then, you know, it's almost ironic that when we have a strength of conviction, we can approach, I believe we can approach people about it because we've taken the time to really build that. And so we know, we know from that process where those people might be at and we can meet them where they are and, you know, like Hector was saying, hopefully we have that relationship foundation that we, you know, are able to, to really speak to them in a way that, um, yeah, in a way that, that bridges that gap rather than driving them away because we're basically telling them like, you're wrong and I'm right, right. you know? Um, because there are going to be those disagreements, yeah. right? I mean, Paul is saying right there, he's just like, well, for some people, this is, but for other, you know, so some other people that might not be. And I, I think about that even with, I mean, we can, we can mention a bunch of different topics, but like some, something like TV shows that, you know, some people are okay watching and other people are like, you watch that? Are you kidding me? Why, why would you let yourself do that? 
And so it's it's important to be able to to have that um, that relationship or that love and that humility too to kind of like you were saying like to realize wait a minute maybe I'm wrong about thinking that you know watching I was gonna say a show but I won't say a show <laughs> it, it, it's okay right um, I th I think it's important that like we, we had that humility and we we have that these conversations these honest conversations about it so that I I'm not just like you know, like Lydia was saying, I'm not just thinking, well, I, I have it figured out and, you know, I, I, I need, a, you know, accountability, right? I need some, some other people to, to kind of um, steer me in the right direction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, um, as we were talking about discussing this tonight, I just kept thinking over and over again about the times in scripture where, you know, the Pharisees, the church people, you know, believed something about, you know, the Sabbath, for instance, that you're not supposed to heal on the Sabbath, or someone like Peter, who believed that you were only supposed to eat certain foods and not others. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Jesus just coming into those scenarios and completely overhauling these people's worlds that they had built and these beliefs that they had built. And I just found myself just kind of praying that, God, would I, would part of my faith life be that I'm open to you just totally breaking down, you know, what I've built up, what I think is right and wrong, and to just be open to, to Jesus doing that, and, and not just thinking of Jesus as just someone I have in my back pocket that just approves of everything I think and do all the time. Mm -hmm. um, or the bobblehead Jesus, as I bobblehead have heard, Jesus? I heard, heard to that. that oh, I see, because it's, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> it took me, it took me a second. It took it me a second. But uh, yeah, I don't know. That was just a thought that yeah. kept coming to me. And usually when that yeah. happens, I, I think it's probably something that I should dwell on and so we, yeah. we should probably consider just last thoughts here because um, like I said, we're not, there's no way we can cover all of it. We just wanted to at least spark some, some discussion and and hopefully if you guys are watching on facebook live you'll reach out to some friends or something like that and say like hey what do you think you know um and and maybe kind of wrestle with some of this stuff but uh does anybody have any any kind of parting shot that uh they want to put up there i know dave's thinking deeply yeah pastor i the thing that strikes me about these passages in this issue is that you could err in a certain sense on either side. Mm -hmm. Some people that would be designated the weaker brethren are the ones with more laws. And um, people that oftentimes are our elders and I say that in, with advisement, knowing that I'm older than you all. But oh. um, oftentimes the ones with the rules were my either my parents' generation or older. And um, they, uh, it's interesting to consider them the weaker brothers and sisters, the ones that are scandalized and upset by our freedoms. But the other side of it is that the, the weaker brothers can be, or sisters can be those who are brand new baby Christians who can be um, struggling with particular issues and what, where the line of freedom is and trying to identify where they should be without having had the time to, to really work that out personally on these debatable issues. And um, I, I don't know, I think about the use of alcohol. I wouldn't want to be, even though I might have a, a toast of champagne, I wouldn't want to be doing that with an alcoholic. You know right. what I mean? Right. Yeah. yeah. And so it goes both sides. And the, the mm -hmm. key to me is love and humility and um, being clear in your head what you're reacting to. Hmm. Like good. when I was younger in the 60s, I was reacting to the old establishment you know, like the hippies, you know, yeah. I wanted the hair just because it was 
anti-establishmentarians. <laughs> and, um, you know, I wanted to play guitar in church because whatever. And I have to be real clear about what I'm reacting against. And um, sometimes we're formed more by what we are reacting away from than we are by yeah. the word of God in Christ. And um, so it's uh, it's like a pen pendulum with a lot of things, you know, as we try and figure out where we fall on should I watch The Bachelor or The Bachelorette? I'm personally fine with watching The Bachelorette, but not The Bachelor. That's <laughs> no. You know what? I'm sorry. I shouldn't be so smug and silly about that. But um, yeah, I have I have been back and forth. You know, sometimes no R-rated movies, and sometimes oh well. I'm going to express my freedom, whatever. Um, well, thank you for being so honest with that. And that, that's really awesome. Uh, you know, just uh, gen general guidance and uh, great thoughts for sure. Thanks. I, I think um, it's good to constantly be trying, not trying each other out, but sharpening each other's sharp and iron um, yeah. as we try and be in community and humbly with grace. So cool. it's a wonderful gift. Yeah, I agree. Mel, did you have something? Sorry. Yeah. Um. The only thing I have is I look at this and the one word that's not in my in my scripture, but the word that, as we talk about looking at someone else and either not really putting judgment on what they're doing and making sure that you know we're trying to, it's consideration. Be considerate. You know, yeah. the peace and the love in that is consideration for someone, you know, and what pastor just said, you know, take it, what are we looking at? You know, are we looking at the sin? Are we looking at the person? What's the situation around? How do we feel about it? You know, what's, what's affecting us in our consideration? And I think that this scripture is excellent to kind of break that down a little bit and, and help us as we try to determine, especially if we're confronting someone or uh, trying to even help someone if, if we feel for whatever reason or ourselves yeah. as well okay. well we'll keep chewing on this this passage throughout because mm -hmm. the, the, you know the word of god is so good and, and, and deep good. and rich um so uh christina did you have something sorry i thought i saw your hand up but no no i was just had my hand up like here <laughs> all good Sweet. posing yeah um do you have any, any <laughs> uh yeah. no i mean i'm glad pastor that you brought up you know that word reactionary and reacting because that's something that's just been on my heart a lot lately because it seems like there's a lot of reacting going on and not a lot of um humbling and empathizing mm -hmm. in our culture right now yeah. and and it you know, it's hard. It's it's hard to know sometimes how to create that um, without, you know, and still having strong convictions about things yeah. and believing yep. that there's a that there's truth, that there's right and wrong, and but still wanting, you know, to not create a reaction on the other side. And so, yeah, yeah. that's I think that's just really relevant. Uh, well, uh, again, uh, we, can, we can continue talking a lot, and I encourage everyone that's watching at home to do that. Pick a fight with your dad. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, it's, it's good to, to, to kind of talk and, and, and wrestle through this stuff. Um, so uh, I am going to ask uh, Christina, do you mind closing us out in, in a prayer? Is that, is that cool? Yeah, no problem. Yeah. Lord, we... Um come before you tonight, people who um, seek to be closer to you and seek to be like you. We ask that you help us examine ourselves and um, explore ways where we can be more compassionate and more understanding and more loving to one another. Um, and that we could um, hold each other accountable in love um, and um, respect one another and um, Consider other viewpoint and consider your plan and what you'd have for us to do. 
um, we ask that you um, walk with us through um, these turbulent times, that you guide our words, that you guide our hearts to um, treat each other in a spirit of love and truth and grace. Um, and we just thank you for the opportunity to um, have your word and to see that you are, uh, to see that the, the church 2000 years ago is dealing with the same issues that the church today is, is dealing with in some regards. And we thank you for your word and we thank you for um, this technology that we could do this together during this time. And we just, um, we love you, Lord. And we, we thank you for, for being with us. Um, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, guys. Thank you so much for, for hanging out. Um...